Hello friends, welcome to another video. This video is part two video of the previous video which, in which I showed how to highlight or shade uh, the specific data points in a visual. Uh, in that video, we highlighted or shaded the area for current month and the future month. In this video, we are going to look into how we highlight or shade the area based on the selected month or number of months or a date range in a slicer. Um, and let's get to Power BI and start looking into the solution. So what the first thing what we need to do here is we need a disconnected date table. And the reason we need a disconnected date table that we need to use in the slicer. If we use our calendar dimension, which is already there connected to our transaction table, if we use that in the slicer, it will filter our transaction table and then we will not able to achieve, achieve the result. So what I did here is I created another table called calendar for slicer. It is just a copy of the calendar table. And the one property of this table is that this table is not connected. If we look into our uh, uh, relationship diagram, this table is not connected with our transaction table, which is it, the name of the transaction table is called table. So that's the first thing. So now what we did here is um, we used this, uh, a created a slicer from this new table, a month slicer and also the date range. Uh, I just created two slicer just to showcase that you can also select a date range or select a month. Uh, but the measure will be the same. So to highlight so, and, and, and in this particular table, why I'm doing the table just to explain how it would work. Uh, so in this particular table, what we have is uh, we have this production by date. Again, just going back to part one video to showcase what we did in this part one. In part one video, we highlighted the current month in the blue and the uh, future month in the orange or red background. And uh, similarly, what we're going to do is in, in this video is the slicer and whatever the month a user select in the slicer that will get highlighted or shaded in the visual. Um, again, going back to the table visual here. Uh, so let's start uh, writing the measure and um, I'm going to call this new measure. Let's call it highlight selected period. First thing we need to do is to make sure to under to find out if any of filter has been or a value selected in the slicer. If no value is selected, we don't want to highlight any area because if we don't check that, then the whole um, visual will be highlighted or shaded. So that will be the first uh, uh, what we need to check here. So that can, we can easily do with the is filtered is the function which we will use. If our new table, which is a, again, calendar for, not the calendar dimension, which is connected to our transaction table, but the, the new uh, table, which we created calendar for slicer, that's the one we will check and for slicer. And because we want to check, you can, is filter, you can do in a column and also on the table, we will do it on the table because we don't know whether a user maybe select a month or a date or could be any column from that table. So we're checking if anything is filtered or in, uh, in the calendar for slicer, then only uh, we want to highlight the area which is selected in the slicer, otherwise not. But if for now, we just uh, uh, return one uh, in that particular case and see what the result comes out to be. Sorry. So let's put this uh, uh, in the card visual here just to quickly look into what the value we're getting. So right now we're getting blank because nothing has been selected. If I select anything in here, this will turn to one. So it means our measure, uh, this condition is working. Now, once this, this is working, what we need to find out is uh, the date which we are visualizing, uh, which is coming from our main calendar table, do they exist in the selection what we had made? So it means if the date, if let's say if I'm selecting February here from my, this is our disconnected table, it means I need to check in my existing date table, which I'm using on my rows, does 
any date exist in the selected date if does that means that area we want to highlight so let's uh, put another if condition here we can combine these if conditions but we're going to make it step by step uh, again what we're going to do is i'm going to use max because this is a my year we need some sort of an aggregation so we're going to say max of calendar date in uh, values of calendar for slicer actually maybe if i go date yeah then uh, it means that, that that the current dates which we are looking at from our main calendar dimension is in the selected dates so then only return the value so let's put one here and otherwise don't return anything so if we put this my year in this visual here in the table visual so what we expect to see is right now nothing because i'm going to remove this card visual for now because nothing has been selected and our first condition is if nothing is selected don't return anything it means uh, this is working fine but let's say if i select january so i'm getting a one for january because now this particular date exists in the uh, month we selected and rest i'm getting blank and let's say if i select january and march here and what i'm getting is january is the value one and february is nothing and march is value and uh, april and so forth so on nothing so th this is working so our condition is working as expected uh, let's keep on building further so now we know which dates we need to highlight and uh, so what we want to highlight we want to get the maximum value so that in the bar visual or chart it shows the the shaded area up to the maximum value so what we're going to do is again use the max x function uh, this was also used in yesterday's uh, example as well on part one video do check that out in this case what we're going to do is all the selection in the calendar whatever we are seeing right now in our visual here in the table visual coming from our main get the maximum value so that is a sum production so what this should return is whatever has been selected currently or which we are visualizing from our main calendar table give me the maximum value so if i put the sum production it's already there in there uh, already there so now you can see we are getting 300 because that is the maximum value in our um, in our whole period what we are looking for so now we got the maximum value 300 for january and for march it means this is the area we're going to shade and rest of the area we are not going to uh, shade because that's the that's the blank so th this seems to be working perfectly fine but there is one caveat in this and which i will just quickly talk about so let's go back to our highlight selected production uh, table this is the visual the same thing we have a on x-axis date from our calendar table and the slice of the same thing so we will add our highlighted selected measure in this so I, I have this previous measure which i will remove and then we put it on the line y-axis so we need to go to the format pane and set the shade for the line but to set the shade what we need to do is uh, right now the in the format pane we don't see the option to set the shade and this is something i've just discovered what we need to do is uh, because the currently the line uh, if no slicer value is selected the measure is not returning any value and that's why we are not get seeing any option which is a bit of a surprise but uh, what we can do is we can just select a value here is in a month and that area gets selected and if we now go to the visual and now we have more options available lines and and uh, other markers and all the stuff so under i think um under colors the shade area uh, under uh, shapes lines and uh, under colors we have the shade area turned on and off and that is what is shading that area um, so that what we need to uh, turn on to shade the areas as you can see now it is currently uh, uh, sh uh, highlighting or shading the january area so our measure which we created is working but there is as i said there is one caveat in this let's say if i um uh, check january and i want to compare january with may for what i want to highlight those areas now here is the problem um, it is highlighting from january to may 
but I only want to highlight January and May because that's the month I selected. I don't want to highlight February, March and April. And if we go back to our original page, we were seeing the value. And if we really select the same things here, January and May, and we know it is returning the value for January $300, which is perfectly fine because that is 300 pieces because that's what we selected and February is blank and no value for March and April. And then in May, it is uh, also coming the value what we expected. But the point is, if these are blank and uh, why in the highlight selected period area, it is giving us the full area instead of January, show the value for January, highlight that and only highlight May, but do not highlight February, March, April. And even the Mayer is working as expected. So what is going on? So here what you need to understand is uh, when we are visualizing the data and on X axis, we have the dates and it has been set as in a continuous. And that's why it is automatically adjusting um, the X axis. And it is because the line does not have the value for all the four or five months, January to May. It is if we hover over uh, to better explain it, if we hover over, it is we are seeing the January data, January, it's keep on going. Even on the X axis, we are in the March right now, uh, but it is still showing on January. And if we keep on going, it's all January. And now here it is May and it is starts showing up the May because of the continuous X axis. And this is pretty misleading in this case. And even the Mayas are working fine. And but the continuous uh, X axis has created the problem. And if I change my X axis, I did a video on the continuous and the categorical uh, X axis. Do check out that video. I will post the link in this video. Uh, but if I go on my X axis in my settings and change it to categorical, now everything should work. As you can see, now it is highlighting January area, but now we're seeing each date. And if we keep scrolling to the right and it is only highlighting the May area. So this is working fine. Uh, but when it is uh, continues, uh, unfortunately, this is not working fine because it is seeing this as in a one single period, whatever we select, even if I uh, let's say if I turn this off, I'd select up to July. So what it is going to do is it's going to January to July, the whole period selected and this is not working fine. So what's the solution for this? This is where sometime returning the zero value is important than the blank value. So what we are doing in our measure, if we go back, uh, if we look at the our measure, what we, we we did in our measure, we said, okay, if the date is within the calendar for slicer date, in this case, between January and July, then only return the value, otherwise return blank. And that is causing it. What we need to do is we need to return the value zero to force it to return the value zero if our date is not within the selected date. And in that case, once we do that, it, it, it should work. And uh, let's double check that. And here you go. As soon as I fix that, and now we have a January highlighted and July highlighted. And if I select any other month, April, and now we have a April highlighted. So basically now I can highlight the period I only select. But the key point here is uh, the, the two things which are playing the roles, continuous and categorical. If I have a categorical x-axis, it would have been worked without making any change into the visual um, or in the measure. But if I'm using a category, a, a continuous x-axis, and in that case, returning the blank did not work, I have to force it to return the zero because what is happening when we are returning the zero, basically, if um, if we quickly look into this, I remove um, the production value. So our line chart is basically if I just remove the shades as well, uh, just for the sake of um, showing what's going on and make the stroke width to one. So basically what it is doing is it is going up and then bringing back to the zero, the, the minimum value if this is zero. And uh, it, it looks like the line is merged with the uh, at the x axis zero line, and that's why it is working. So it's forcing to return the value, and um, and that's why it is working. So it's very very important sometimes not returning the zero and uh, uh, or the blank always is does work. And uh, 
how the continuous and the categorical x-axis does play the role as well in terms of uh, uh, visualizing the data. I hope you learned a couple of things out of this, how continuous and categorical uh, values work, how the disconnected table is used for the slicer and also not necessarily returning the blank values always is the right way, then we have to force to return the zero value. Do let me know what you guys think about this um, uh, video and uh, please do subscribe my channel for more upcoming Power BI videos. Until next video, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.